Let's start Rockets, uh, the refs, um, and I'll just, I'll just rephrase what I said, which is, A, when you add a heavy dose of manipulation into your offensive game, you do become harder to officiate. They are. And I do think NBA veteran officials, who are mostly playoff officials, are less likely to be manipulated, and they do have a right to set a tone in the series. And I do think the ref said yesterday, we're going to scale back in the manipulation a little. It's not like Harden didn't get to the line, 14 hit 13. But I wasn't bothered by what I saw yesterday. I, I w- well, I was bothered by the fact that it was hard to watch basketball because <laughs> every time anyone goes up for a jump shot, they're trying to draw a foul. Yeah. I heard Reggie Miller on the Dan Patrick show, and he's blaming World Be Free for this. I Reggie, him. you ruined the game. <laughs> you ruined it. Okay, It's unwatchable. Uh, is, is James Harden right to say that all season long, if you came into his landing space, he, they were called for fouls? Yes. Go back and watch. Yeah. Even go back and watch the Utah series when they played this bizarre style of defense where they were actually playing behind him on his left side, forcing him into the lane to Rudy Gobert. Like, I'd literally never seen that from any player in the history of the NBA, yeah. where you're actually, you just want him to go and take a two, yeah. and go ahead, go ahead in there. Rudy Gobert's in there. Yeah. And it was, and they, and they, Utah nearly pulled off an upset even in game five. Yeah. Um, so he's not wrong to say that he's gotten those calls, and the refs have done, you know, put themselves in this corner in that he expects. You know, like a child, you let a kid get away with it long enough, they're going to become entitled and expectant to get those calls. On the other hand, the Rockets can't win straight up. They can't win if they don't get calls. And this is how NBA playoffs have always been officiated. And by the way, he did get some calls and they're challenging some of the Golden State Warrior shots as well. So uh, I thought it was a hard watch. I think Reggie Miller's ruined basketball. I think you have to go up straight, land straight, and if you do, I think they're going to call more fouls. Remember, game two is a completely different officiating crew, and the complaining generally works. He's going to get a couple of these calls, but I don't think they can win the series because you can only win yeah. the series if you get calls. It's really interesting. Is if um, I, I like what you said there at the end. I, I never heard that before. If you had an understanding in basketball where you shoot straight up, Um, And that's your landing radius. But the minute you turn, we're not going to expand your radius. As an official, I would be like, listen, you may think because you're leaning and falling, I'm going to expand your radius. I'm not. Where your feet are when you shoot is what I'm giving you. Because what Harden's trying to do, he did it this year, Doug. He became falling Harden. Yeah. So he, he added a layer of manipulation. And I do think, Doug, refs struggled with it all year. I think they really did. No, and, and the, the flopping every time and the throwing your head back every time you're driving, it becomes really hard. In real time, it's hard to know. Yes. Did he get hit? Did he not get yeah. hit? You almost have to find a way to be extra punitive. You know, when you go back and watch a tape, if you see like in the Utah series, he acted like he got hit in the throat. Yes. And nothing happened. <laughs> I know. You're like, wait a second. That, 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 that it, like you use the word manipulation, right? right. It, it completely changes the tone of the game. Yeah. I almost feel like you have to find a way to... Two shots and the ball if we catch you flopping on replay. Here's the other big thing. If we're going to call every time somebody gets in your landing space, I'm okay with it. But let's also remember, there's a reason they're able to create that space. They're creating the space through push-offs with this chicken wing, okay, which we're not calling. It's okay. Like, look, I'm not going to call the chicken wing, but you can't with the, you create space. Now I got to yeah. close up that space. I can't just let you shoot. Additionally, the travel, the step back travels. If we're going to call everything, fine, let's call everything. If we're going to call, you know, only complete absolute fouls, then that's fine, which is what I think they did. He's pushing off to create that space. This is a lot like the NFL. We want to review now pass interference. Well, sometimes defenders get caught pass interference because the offensive player pushes off to create the space, and the defensive player closes up that space, and that's where there's contact. When does pass interference begin? When does the foul actually begin in basketball? Is it on the push-off or only when they close up that airspace? Let's talk uh, Milwaukee, and I took Boston in this series. I think it's a seven-gamer or a six-gamer. I did it because I think Brad Stevens is brilliant. Kyrie's one of the best closers in the history of the league, especially under 6'4", and they do have some playoff experience. Experience. Uh, they've won series. They've gone seven. Yeah. I think it's close, though. I think Giannis is amazing. But I do say this. The Celtics don't have a defined two. But Jason Tatum is a unique basketball prodigy. Number three pick, one year at college, great, stunningly good playoff rookie year. Chris Middleton went three years of college, second round pick, was demoted first year to the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. He's worked his tail off to become about a three, not a two. The reason I don't buy Milwaukee is... If you, if you pull back the reins on Giannis, if you marginalize him to some degree, I don't trust Middleton. I actually tr- 
trust Jason Tatum more than Middleton as a basketball talent. Well, a, a little bit of the, this is two things. One, I think you're marginalizing who the actual number two is for the Boston Celtics. Now, who is it? Al Horford. Uh, because it doesn't show up in the stat column, right? There's a reason that they won two national championships in college. Yeah. There's, there's a reason that they're able to do such a good job against Giannis. It's not just the like-sized defenders, which is how this team is built, right? Yeah. This team is built for a KD-type player, for a, for a Giannis Antetokounmpo type of player, yeah. where they have multiple guys that they can bodies that they can put on him. Yes. Much like people used to defend LeBron James. Yes. Same size guy, really hard to... You can't do it with just one guy. you got to have a bunch of different guys. But Al Horford is so good at all the little things. Yeah. He can make just enough shots so that your center has to guard him to NBA three-point range. Yeah. He can score just enough in the post where you can't get caught up in a bad mismatch in the low post. He can defend just well enough on Giannis and on guards, on switches. He's remarkable. I actually think he's your second best player. Yeah. And then you point out that Brad Stevens has stepped up his game. Brad Stevens was not great with this team in the egos and the personalities and the fighting over minutes during the regular season. Now you, you take Marcus Smart away, so that creates more minutes for everybody, more happiness. And then now it becomes about matchups and creating mismatches, which is where Brad is the best in the business. So I think we're underselling Al Horton. Horford, and we don't realize the brilliance of Brad Stevens. And then the last thing is, this is a lot like the Harden discussion. The regular season is different than the postseason. Has been it's forever. A, it has been forever. So let's forget about the fact that the Bucks had the best record in the regular season. It Basketball just becomes different. Yeah. No, I mean, they call it the second season. It's a different year. It's okay. I think if Kyler Murray's great, I think he has a chance to be. They won the draft. <laughs> uh, I also think uh, Josh Rosen... Um, is it's really strange. There are people doing bad things all over sports in general. And in the NFL, we've got one star player you'll talk about uh, did really bad things. And I can make an argument should never play football again. Josh Rosen has gotten a label as difficult. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I got to see proof after a while. A hot tub in college does not resonate with me as a bad guy. I thought Rosen this weekend handled this whole mess better than I would have in my 50s with, with grace and humility. Tell people what he did. I mean, I, I, I said before, if I would have come to this network and six months in, you know, we like Costas, you know, we, we, we're going to sit around and be like, I thought you, I moved my family the whole way. It's ha ha happened to me before. So. <laughs> but I mean, I thought Josh Rosen handled himself incredibly well. I did too. I thought he became a sympathetic figure. I mean, not only did he, he post a, a thank you to Arizona Cardinals fans, but then he appeared at Larry Fitzgerald's. Uh, charity softball game, yeah. right? Yeah. Look, the, the thing about Josh Rosen is, uh, although he's become a sympathetic figure in the Dolphins, I mean, you, you're talking about pennies on the dollar, <laughs> where not only do they only have to give up a late second round pick, but they also don't have to pay the signing bonus. So if he can become... He's free. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, an incredible deal for the Dolphins. But... There's a reason that the Redskins didn't want to trade for him, right. that the Giants didn't want to trade for him, that all of those other quarterbacks went before him because Josh Rosen, th there's two parts to it. One, there's the thought that he's still fragile. I, right? I agree he, with that. He had the shoulder surgery yep. that caused him to stop playing tennis. Yes. He was injured every year he played at UCLA. Yes. Not, his, not his fault. No. But also the thought that like, look, dude, you, you can't take up to a beating. The second part is the leadership aspect of it. You go back to when he was in high school, to when he's in college, to now as a pro. There just isn't anybody who says, you know who's a great leader? That Josh Rosen. Yeah. I love that guy. Right. They don't, dis they don't hate him. He's not, he's not Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler was so disliked in Chicago, <laughs> they took him out of the locker room. He yes. got dressed True in story. an alternative locker room. True story. He was despised. Yeah. But there is fears that he could become, because he's so bright and smarter than everybody else in the room. And knows it. Like, right. And, and that's some, like, look, I've frankly not here, but I've run into that where somebody says like, oh, you're so smart. That actually isn't the compliment that on paper it would read to being. So he, he's going to have to he's going to have to take a breath and realize why it didn't work, uh, because whatever he did within that first year and a lot of it wasn't his fault. Like Steve Keim saying Kyler Murray is my guy. Wait a second. You signed Sam Bradford, 20 million dollars. <laughs> you had Glennon for five million dollars. They spent a lot of then money moved, on quarterbacks. Then you moved up for Josh Rosen. You had a coach you got rid of within nine months. You had two offensive coordinators. So those are all Keim's decisions. Then now he's saying, no, 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 no. Now I know what I want. 
Um, that said, like, look, this is who th- this is the reputation that Josh Rosen has. And as you've said, and I agree with it, reputations when you're in your 20s, they kind of earned. And so he's going to have to figure out a way to balance his personality, his ego, his intelligence and become a better version of himself as a leader in Miami. But where I support him is in all sports, and I'm not blaming any sport individually, but the NFL's got guys doing bad things to people and and they'll get second chances. This idea that we've kind of marginalized Josh, man, I got to see some videotape. I mean, I, I called out Baker Mayfield for uh, a cop video. I thought it was reasonable, right? Like, I don't want my quarterback doing that. I was literally like, that is outrageous. No, it was a police video. You're a no, quarterback. You're ran. Like, yeah, yeah, but let's, let's, not, let's not combine the two, okay? okay. Like, I don't think I'll get to. I don't think this is the biggest story of the weekend. Okay. I think the Tyreek Hill thing is Kansas City okay, football but, player. Yeah, but but let's also be honest. Like this is this was clearly a business decision, and the Giants had a chance to trade for him. Yeah, not even necessarily a first round pick. They could have traded a better second round pick. They chose not to do so. The Redskins had a right. chance, and they both said we'll take prospects that aren't viewed as as skilled as Josh Rosen right. because we have tape on him and there's been enough people that say he's just not a leader. And that's what I think you've missed on Baker Mayfield is you may not like his personality, but every locker room he walks into, he owns, he takes over, yeah. and those guys want to play for him. And that's the stuff it takes to be an NFL quarterback. Now, look, let's not bury it. We can talk about winning the draft and losing the draft and the Raiders and Mike Mayock and overdrafting guys and Dave Gettleman. The Tyreek Hill story is the biggest story of the weekend. We're talking the most dynamic offense maybe we've ever seen in the NFL with the fastest player that we might have ever seen. Yeah, in I think he is fastest. With the only quarterback in the NFL who could possibly overthrow him, and even he can't <laughs> overthrow him. Right. And, and so the Kansas City Chiefs have lost their running back who led the league in rushing to domestic violence. Yeah. Now they're going to lose their wide receiver. He should never play football in the National Football League again, not just because of this and because of the audio tape, because of what he did at Oklahoma State. Yeah. And, 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 and then they traded for Frank Clark, who's got domestic violence, and gave him $100 million guaranteed. But the Kansas City Chiefs, who are one play away, one offsides away from going to the Super Bowl, just lost Tyreek. Like, that's the biggest story. That's the biggest game changer of the weekend. I had an NFL executive tell me this. They said, listen, the draft is what you're trying to do is find duplication for guys who work. You occasionally get guys like Brady who nobody works that hard. You can't find that work ethic where he goes to Costa Rica with his supermodel wife and is watching film all day. You can't duplicate Tyreek Hill's speed. Nobody in the history of me watching football, there's nobody that makes Deion Sanders look pedestrian. And so I, I, I do think I wake up this morning and I think Kansas City doesn't feel as much as we all like Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, I would agree they don't feel quite as big. Let me let me shift to this though. I'm not a real big believer in win the draft, lose the draft. But if you count free agency and your draft, the San Francisco 49ers have added D Ford, Quan Alexander, Nick Bosa, um, Jeremy Garoppolo comes back, uh, the Falcons, uh, uh, Coleman, the running back, and I think they hit a home run with their second pick, which is a wide receiver from South Carolina. No team to me feels differently athletically, like end of the season two this morning, than San Francisco. Good God, you had D Ford and Nick Bosa and then Quan Alexander. This is, like, what they, this is what they tanked for two years ago, right? And then they got Garoppolo and they're like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 that's, that's kind of speeding ahead of the. Now, look, it all works if Garoppolo can play and stay healthy. Right. That's the big thing. If he can stay, play and stay healthy, you have a guy who's an incredible play caller and, and seems to be a really good leader in Shanahan as your head coach. And you have a team that is ready to go, right? Well, this, this could be what, basically what the Rams did going back a couple years ago when they changed coaching staffs, which is they had talent, they added talent with, with free agency, and they had drafted well enough for years. That's what it feels like with the San Francisco 49ers. Let's go back to the NBA. So um, you've been saying this for years. Two year, the last two and a half years. Kevin Durant's the best basketball player in the world. Um, and I always felt he was two to LeBron. Okay. And then LeBron got hurt and he moved ahead. You think, I think you've thought he's better than LeBron longer than that. Well, I just thought, you go back to two NBA finals ago, right? Two NBA, when he okay. was, who was better in the second half of four of the five games? We judge players when we see them on the same court against each other. And that's the reason that Kevin Durant went to Golden State was he wanted LeBron on an island so I can show the entire world who's the better basketball player. And he felt like he was, and on the biggest stage, he was. And that's what he did last year. And you can say that LeBron didn't have a good enough team, and that's a fair argument. But that's not the argument we're making about teams or whatever. Who's the better player? 
Kevin Durant was the better player. And and now, obviously, LeBron's gotten a little bit older and he's gotten hurt. I don't think LeBron's the second best player. I think Kawhi Leonard, if you watch him over the weekend, the ability to play both ends of the floor is is the difference maker. And that's what LeBron always had on James Harden, yeah. has always had on, on others. Yeah. And, and frankly, what KD and Kawhi have on Steph Curry, who's magnificent. But there's just things physically he can't do at the defensive no, end. It- Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.